The Iron Man trilogy ends with no ACDC and for no reason a movie that's set during Christmas. Happy Hanukkah everyone! Hello everybody and welcome to my review of Iron Man 3, the third and final film of the Iron Man trilogy, released in 2013, directed by Shane Black, not Jon Favreau, although Jon Favreau is involved in the picture, he's just not directing it. He's an executive producer, as well as an actor reprising his role of Happy Hogan. So... Iron Man 3, uh, so this is the first movie of Phase 2 of Marvel's, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and obviously the third of the Iron Man trilogy. Um, although it's more of a sequel to Avengers Assemble than it is Iron Man 2, obviously it's still a sequel to Iron Man 2 because it's called Iron Man 3, but you get the idea. So, um, <coughs> Iron Man 3, the basic plot of this film is that it centers around, obviously, Tony Stark, once again. Um, he engages in a kind of political war, I guess you could say, with this guy called the Mandarin, this kind of um, media terrorist, I guess you could say. He's um, he's a guy who gets broadcast over, over TV and um, threatens the world through terrorism, and um, Tony Stark uh, challenges him to a um, bit of good old-fashioned revenge. And um, he has Tony's house destroyed, and Tony Stark basically loses everything, and then has to... Um, then he gets separated from Pepper and everything. He has virtually nothing at his disposal, and he once again has to kind of rebuild himself to get back home and stop the real Mandarin from launching this... Um, program called Extremis, which is like this body-enhancing thing. <laughs> yeah, that's really it. Um, so, yeah. Um, Iron Man 3. This is a very, very perplexing movie. If you're familiar with the Iron Man movies, this is a very different film. Um, it's a very... It's a very weird film in that sense, in that it goes in a strange direction um, after the first two films. And you can clearly tell that this is directed by somebody else. Had John Favreau directed this, the movie would be very different. But um, I really enjoyed Iron Man 3. I really, really enjoyed Iron Man 3. I think it is a great movie. A very good, very satisfying ending to the trilogy. I don't know if it's the best of the trilogy. I don't think it is. But um, <laughs> it's it's certainly pretty solid for what it is. Um, I think, first of all, the story is very clever in the sense of the Tony Stark. His arc as a character is very interesting in this film. How he um, he's going through some kind of PTSD um, anxiety after the events of Avengers when he threw the missile into the wormhole... Um, and this continues after that. I thought that was very clever. I thought that was a very clever way to kind of change his character a bit, to make him more vulnerable. Um, he's still the lovable arsehole that <laughs> that we uh, that we know and love, but um, he's a bit more mature in this one. He's 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 grown. You can see the characters changed over the over the three movies, and in this one he's much more mature. He's much more. We see much more of the emotional side of him, although we'd still yet to see more of the emotional side of him in Civil War, but still <laughs> in Captain America Civil War. But in terms of the Iron Man trilogy, this is where we see the emotional side of Tony, where he finally starts to give a shit more about, you know, what he has and, you know, obviously Pepper and everything. Um, I think Robert Downey Jr. is fantastic once again. He gives a great performance. It's much more of a three-dimensional performance. Um, obviously because he's dealing with the whole anxiety thing, uh, as well as being funny, 
and also quite emotional at the same time. So he's playing three different angles of Tony Stark, which is very, um, very interesting to see. And um, I like his journey throughout the film. And it's interesting how the film, this film in the trilogy, has his narration, his voiceover, throughout different moments of the movie, um, which was really interesting to me. I really thought that was an interesting decision. This is a much more darker film, a much more dramatic film than Iron Man 2, definitely, and kind of maybe even the first one as well. <laughs> you know. Um, as for the other characters, we have Gwyneth Paltrow as Pepper Potts. She continues to be very good. She kind of doesn't really do much in the film, though. She's in the beginning, and then she's absent for quite a lot of it. And then she turns up at the end. So she's kind of... Because she's kind of captured for most of this film. Um, but her performance is pretty good. And she gets to contribute in some of the action sequences. She even gets to wear the Mark 42 suit. Which is uh, really cool. Um, <laughs> I like that. And her and Tony's relationship I think is great. Because they are now together. I mean at the end of Iron Man 2. They got together in, in a relationship. And now um, they're... they're, they're together so it's um, really interesting to see how that all plays out and I think Tony finally starts to appreciate her a lot more after having nearly lost her so <laughs> that's interesting um, Don Cheadle returns to reprise his role as Rhodey or Colonel James Rhodes who also known as the Iron Patriot they have rebranded uh, rebranded War Machine as he was in Iron Man 2 they've rebranded him as Iron Patriot um, which is cool you know I prefer War Machine but you know Iron Patriot looks cool um, and he gets to do a lot more as well. He gets to contribute in the uh, the final battle, and as well as um, <laughs> helping Tony as much as he can in this film. Um, uh, we have uh, Rebecca Hall as Maya Hansen. Um, if I were to make a criticism, I, I would say some of the characters in this film are a little bit wasted, and she's one of them. Um, her character really is a nothing character. I don't really understand her purpose in the film. Um, I know she kind of introduces Tony to the idea of having the extremis in his body, but um, she's barely in the movie, and she also, not a spoiler to say, she dies. A <laughs> death scene whilst whilst was kind of kind of dramatic in a way. Uh, after I thought about it, I thought, uh, right, yeah, she's just kind of there, really. <laughs> so I, I don't know. But no, there you go. But um, you know, Maya Hansen, kind of a wasted character. She's really there just to be hot. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> um, and also, John Favreau is wasted as Happy Hogan. Now, I really liked John Favreau's in this film. Happy Hogan was always in the background of the first two films. So this time, he was going to get a full front role. He was going to get a much bigger part. He was gonna. We were going to see him pursue Savin and and you know. Prove to Tony that Pepper was in danger. They start doing that, and then they just forget about him. Come on, guys! No, I was really enjoying seeing Happy's pursuit of that guy. So then they just chuck him in the hospital, and they just forget about Happy until the very end of the movie. Oh, come on, guys! Like Happy should have been involved with the story a lot more. Um, maybe for whatever reason, John Favreau decided not to do many scenes in Iron Man Three, but. Oh, that's a shame. That was a wasted opportunity. He should have been in the movie a lot more. Um, in terms of the villains, um, <laughs> I guess I, I can say the villains are okay. I mean, this movie isn't perfect, and unfortunately the villains just aren't perfect. I think Killian is a better villain than the villains from Iron Man 2, but that isn't really saying an awful lot. Um... I just, the only thing I don't like about Killian is how, in the beginning of the movie, he's this complete idiot. He's like, oh, oh, Mr. Stark, oh, 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 he's, he's this complete weirdo, and he completely idolizes him. And then, when we see him in the present day, he's much more refined, he's got his hair slicked back, he's a lot more smarter. Um, it just doesn't work for me. It's like two different characters. It's like, what? How did he go through that massive change? What and how it's like he changed his personality. How? How and why? Like it doesn't make sense. There are things that don't make sense about that. Um and of course I have to address the elephant in the room. Ben Kingsley. 
as the Mandarin. <laughs> um, or should I say Trevor? <laughs> let's, let's be honest. I mean, I'm not going to ruin this twist in case anybody has uh, not seen Iron Man 3. But um, in terms of the Mandarin, they go in a very bizarre <laughs> direction with the Mandarin. I thought it was funny. I thought it was hilarious, personally. I laughed my ass off um, <laughs> with that twist. But I could fully understand if people... If, I mean, if you hate this movie because of that twist and that twist alone, you are completely justified in that in that opinion. I, I, I understand. It's it's going to piss some people off because it is not accurate to, the, to the, the Marvel comics. It is completely derivative of what was done there. But I thought it was very funny and a <laughs> very interesting twist. Did it need to happen? No, potentially not. Um, because in the first half of the movie, he's how he is in the trailer. Um, but then in the second half, it's different. Um, so yeah, that was uh, <laughs> interesting. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, but I think Ben Kingsley is funny in the movie. Um, Savin is, uh, is the henchman. He's all right. And other than that, there's not really other characters. Oh, there is this kid in the in the movie. I forgot to mention him. His name's Harley. Um, he's also the kid in Jurassic World. Um, I think he's he's grown a little bit older now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's pretty good in the movie. Um, and here's some good scenes of Robert Downey Jr. I think what's interesting about this movie is the fact that it is more darker and it is more dramatic. It's actually funny <laughs> as well. It's the funniest of the trilogy. Um, which surprised me. Like the humor is sharp. It's 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 quick. It's quippy. Like it's, it's bam 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 bam. It's very punchy. I think that's the word I, I was looking for. Very very punchy, and um, I laughed a lot during this movie. I had, had a great time, watching this. It's the most fun of the Iron Man films, and it's and it's much a much needed change um, after Iron Man two, which was very, um, which was still entertaining, but there were things the plot was a little bit messy. So this is much more structured, even though certain things, like, I have to say, the extremist thing doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't make sense. Uh, they don't really explain it very well. I mean, at first, you know, it's it's this whole think tank thing about the big brain, and then it's like the body is enhanced by fire, and they can breathe fire. Like, what? <laughs> like, come on, like, just explain it more, please. It doesn't really make sense, and um, I wouldn't be the first person to say that. Um, I think the action sequences in this movie are terrific, and this movie is much more has much more action um, than the first two, which is which is always cool. Like there's a spectacular scene when Tony's house gets blown up and destroyed, and Tony has to fight off the helicopters. That was really cool. Um, there's actually quite a lot of action sequences with just Tony Stark because there's a lot of time in this movie where Tony isn't wearing the Iron Man suit because he's lost everything, um, which I think is great. And, uh, and it's great that they involved him himself in some action just without the suit. I thought that was that was nice and it was a change. It was something different. Um, you're either going to like the directions they go in this movie or you're not. I liked it because it was different. It was bold. And the fact that... You know, you're able to show Tony himself without the Iron Man suit doing all that shows that how much of a strong character he is, that he can survive without all of that. And <laughs> he doesn't need the suit of armor to protect himself. He can defend himself on his own. And, um, yeah, that was cool. That was really cool. Um, and obviously, um, th there is a bit more action. And then they have the final battle, which is the big... All the, all the suits come crashing in and... They have to save the president and Pepper, and they fight Killian. And it's. I, I will say that the final battle probably goes on a little bit too long, but I do really like it. It is a big clusterfuck of bang, smash action, and it's it's what we you know it's what you want in an Iron Man movie. You want to see a lot of action, and you do get that. You get a lot of spectacle. There's more action than Iron Man two, definitely, and probably even the first one. The first one doesn't have too much action. Um. I do think structurally there are some minor problems here. Like I said, the, the final battle is a bit long. The extremist thing doesn't really make sense. Some of the twists in this movie, like the Mandarin twist, is going to piss some people off. And they're not going to like it. And I understand that. Um, so, <laughs> if you know, for that reason, no, fair enough. But I personally really like it. I do think that the first movie is more has more of a, a central arc, a more of an emotional arc for Tony, um, 
Although this is an emotional arc, but I think that one was stronger because it was his origins. And it was him, he had a change of heart. This is um, a very dramatic arc for him because of the anxiety issue. And then also he's, there's a lot of emotional beats to that, like his relationship with Pepper. And, you know, how he affects the people around him. He's starting to become more aware of all of that, which is very, very well done. It's very well written. It is well written, other than the extremist thing, which doesn't make sense. But um, <laughs> that that aside, um, the film's shot very well. It's it's pretty well paced. It moves along fine. And there's a great scene in an aeroplane when Tony has to save 13 people who are falling. And, um, you know, that was really cool. That was really interesting. And I think the movie's ending is nice. It wraps, wraps itself up quite well. Like, um, Tony gets the shrapnel removed from him. And, you know, everything's all kind of hunky-dory, really. So, I mean, there's not much really else to say about Iron Man 3. Um, the music. The music score. The music the music score is, 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 is okay. Um, Brian Tyler does the music score. He does this theme. The da 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 which kind of re repeats quite a lot. It does get slightly repetitive. And also, this is uh, an Iron Man movie with no ACDC. And uh, <laughs> they really wanted to go away from that. And um, the fact that it's set at Christmas has no significance to the plot whatsoever. That doesn't matter. But um, I think it's it's honestly um, it's one of my favourite movies in the MCU. It's very bold. It's very... It's very interesting, it's very entertaining, it's fun, you don't have to think too much about it, or if you want to, you can think about it. It's a very solid piece of drama, it's a very fun action movie, it's a lot of things, it's a great comedy, it, it's as the review on the Blu-ray says, smart, funny and spectacular. So, I really, really like Iron Man 3, I just wish that they would fix some of the things that don't make sense, and some of the characters that are wasted... So I'm going to give Iron Man 3, it's just going to creep in at a 9 out of 10. So yeah, and um, Shane Black did a pretty good job directing this movie. <laughs> so, that's it. Um, one more review to go for the MCU, and then I'm up to date. And then I'll do my massive MCU movies ranking before Avengers Infinity War, which has everybody <laughs> in, the, in the film. That's going to be a long review. So, that's my review of Iron Man 3. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the movie. What is your favourite movie of the Iron Man trilogy? Please comment down below. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for my review of Ant-Man. And until then, I'm Mr. Titus 11. See ya.